Hey, what's up, guys? This is Mike, and I'm currently running Pure Nexus on my Nexus 6. This is available unofficially for the Mako Nexus 4, as well as the 5, the 6, obviously, the 7 2013 tablet, and should be coming out pretty soon for the Nexus 9. It also should be official on the Nexus 4 pretty soon, but the unofficial Nexus 4 build, the community build, is pretty stable from what I've heard. doesn't have too many issues. It's also worth noting that if you are a user of Project Fi or T-Mobile's VOLTE, it's going to be fully compatible with those as well. So this thing is really, really fluid, and I am running Hell's Core kernel with it, but the stock kernel or Elemental X or whatever other kernel you possibly will use shouldn't really make a difference. I mean, this thing is rock solid and stable. If I open an application, well, this will be the first time I open up my calendar, but if I open up an application, even if it's in the background just being dormant, it's just really, really quick. And take note that I'm actually using a dual core setup. So I'm not actually using all four cores of my Nexus 6. I'm using a dual core uh, tweak setup, and most of you know that by now. But it opens things up really, really quickly, and the performance is really, really nice. I don't have any issues with stuttering or hiccups. Uh, if I stop or do anything like that, it's really, really responsive. But let's go ahead and dive into the settings and talk more about what Pure Nexus will bring to you and why I think it's one of the best ROMs you can flash onto your Nexus device. So like most ROMs, you're going to see it does have its own little subcategorized menu, but it does a really, really good job of cleaning this up and making sure that all of the ROM specific settings are in this category. So if you go into something like display, for example, most of the ROMs will have everything packed in here. You'll have all of your uh, LCD densities, everything that's uh, feature packed will be just kind of thrown into the regular menus. But what Pure Nexus does is completely cleans it up. So you'll see you have a extra display here, but it's going to have all of these specific settings completely separated from your regular uh, stock experience. And I really, really like that. So in display, you'll have your LCD density, you'll have your lock screen wallpaper, which is a cool feature. So you can actually change the lock screen wallpaper and make it different from your regular wallpaper. And that's a pretty cool little feature baked in. You also have wake on plug, you can disable or enable that basically when you're plugging in your device or you're charging it or something like that. LED notification lights are going to be placed in here as well. And I think that's actually a smart choice instead of putting this in the sound and notifications. I think it's more of a visual. So I think that placing it into display is actually a really cool option. And this is fully functional. Um, if you are using a different kernel in the battery light settings, you might not be able to turn this off. Something like Franco kernel might give you an issue. So you might have to use the standalone app to fix that but most kernels will be able to turn off the LED light if that bothers you during sleep or anything like that. Uh, you can change your LED notification lights as well. Fully optional, you can change it on the RGB and you can also add specific applications and change the colors on that with the uh, custom values right there if you enable that feature. Now in interface, you're going to have your notification drawer. If you go in here, you'll have your quick pull down settings. So there's some really great stuff here. You have your right and left options, or you can completely disable it if you're not a fan of the quick pull down right there to get into your quick toggle settings. You can also show the weather in the header bar. So if you'll see here, I have my weather displayed. And if you tap on that, it will bring up all of your weather information. And you can refresh this on the fly. You can also change the icons if you want to. We can go back real quickly. So you'll see down here at the bottom, the C-Lock, click on that, and then you'll be able to change your weather information. I have my GPS disabled, so I got that notification. You can change your icons. So if you want clouds, or you can get different uh, icons as well. So if you go in here now, it will change the icon featured on that specific uh, weather information. So that's pretty cool that you can go in here and customize things to your liking. Obviously, there's timestamps, uh, locations, and metric that you can change up. Most of this is pretty standard. You know about this, but it is fully featured in the Pure Nexus experience. You also have force expanded notifications. So if you have a particular app that uh, will be compatible with this, instead of getting a single notification on that particular app, you will get multiple expanded notifications in the Dropbox. Uh, you also have the select and order tiles like most ROMs feature. You will get a very nice list to choose from. Swagger isn't anything important. So if you click on this, it's just a silly little developer uh, gimmick. It's just going to say you can't toggle the swagger, but uh, it doesn't really do anything. It's just there for fun. So don't take it serious. Everything else is really, really good and functional. You'll find everything you pretty much need. The only thing that's missing, in my opinion, is a nav bar quick setting because uh, I do use the swipe navigation and sometimes LMT. Very, very uh, rarely do I use LMT. But it's nice just to go in here and hit that toggle. 
and have your lollipop nav bar back. Not a big deal, not a deal breaker, but I'd like to see that featured in the future. But everything else is fully functional. There's also a screen off uh, quick setting tile, and this is actually really cool. You can turn off your display, obviously. If your kernel supports double tap to wake, you can rewake the device. But if you long press, you'll also get into your power menu. So you'll see there, I have my power menu. You can also get into it while pressing the power button, obviously. But if you long press on that screen off, it will come up as well. So that's pretty cool to have that baked in and everything else is pretty well done. You'll also notice that I do have four, um, excuse me, four quick settings per row, four tiles per row. But you can change this, you can do three and you'll also see that displayed in real time in your rearranging uh, rows there. So it's actually really nice that everything is fully functional and it's just really, really clean. Uh, you do have advanced location settings on GPS. So if you go in here, let me get back into my four row. If you go back into GPS, you'll get your really, really quick, easy settings to get into. You don't have to go in there, go into another menu, into settings, and then turn everything on. The only thing that is missing, however, is Wi-Fi advanced quick settings. So if you tap on Wi-Fi, it's just going to be on and off. You'll have to long press in order to get into your Wi-Fi features. Otherwise, you will have to enable the first row there, and then you'll be able to get into your Wi-Fi features. Uh, recent apps, pretty basic stuff here. You get your search bar. If you want to put that up there, you can disable this completely so you get more screen and you can enable the recent long press. If you long press the recent button, if your navigation bar is enabled, it'll pop back into your last app that you had open. Clear all button can be placed anywhere, so that's nice. It's down here by default on the right, but you can place it pretty much anywhere you want to location-wise, as you can see there. A status bar, some pretty cool stuff here. You're gonna find most of the basic stuff. You can change you know, the date, times, PM, AMs. You can change the centering, uh, alignment, but the cool thing about Pure Nexus is you can actually change the uh, colors on some of these. So you can actually change it to match your layers or themes or things like that. So that's about the only thing you're going to find different uh, in the status bar in terms of those features. Everything else is going to be pretty much uh, the standard stuff. You do have network traffic, though, and you can change the color of that as well. So if you're a fan of seeing your incoming and outgoing or a particular stat on your traffic, you can watch that. Notification ticker is here. You can also double tap to sleep on the status bar. It's also worth mentioning that you can double tap on the nav bar as well with this ROM to sleep the device if you want to. Brightness control is also functional, so you can swipe on the status bar to change the brightness control instead of the slider. You can also disable that slider if you want to uh, change that. Show notification count, typical stuff. The only thing different with this in general is the alarm icon and Bluetooth icons can be disabled. So if you're worried about screen burning or you're just worried about clutter on your status bar, you can disable those icons uh, with this particular ROM. But just be aware that you might forget sometimes that you're actually on Bluetooth or that you set an alarm and it won't be displayed. So come back in here and turn those on. Now, navigation bar is pretty nice and fully functional. You can enable and disable this in this little menu here. And you can change up the size down here at the bottom. So you do have your IME selector icon. You can disable, enable, show arrow keys while typing, uh, kill app back button. So if you long press the back button, it will kill the foreground app. So that's a great little feature. And as I mentioned before, you can double tap to sleep on the nav bar. You also have left-handed mode. So if you are in landscape and you want to ch you know, change that up, put your buttons over here, you can change that up. Uh, it's also worth noting that if you want to rearrange the buttons, you can do that after you hit edit. So if you want to go into like a Samsung look, you can just long press and hold and then drag those around. So you'll see it's different now. So just long press, hold, drag them around, and you'll be back. You can save this You can restore the defaults if you made any mistakes. You can obviously add some buttons. So you can add power, uh, power button, the menu button, and a search button. So if you want to put the power on there for some reason, you can do that. Power menu, you get some nice options. You can hold long press, hold that. You'll see that I have my basic setup, but you can add a whole bunch of stuff. You can put your sound panel, setting shortcut, uh, user switcher if you have that enabled, screen record, and screenshots. You can put just about anything on there. Uh, volume rocker, the only thing that's really not in the volume rocker controls is volume step. So I'd like to see that maybe in a future build. Not a deal breaker, but it would be nice to have. But you do have some nice features. You can turn off that annoying beeping uh, indicator when you are adjusting your volume controls. Uh, you also have volume key control ringtone volume. So if you look at this real closely, it will say if on volume keys control ringtone volume, if off volume keys control media volume. So you can control ringtone or media volumes depending on 
whether or not you enable or disable the function there. So read that carefully, but it's a nice feature. You also have volume button weight control, so you can wake your device with the volume rockers instead of just the power button if you want that. Just be aware that if you are using it to seek music controls or tracks on a media player, this, you know, that will overwrite it. So if you have that enabled, it will obviously disable that by default. Uh, volume button swap is pretty nice. If you're in landscape, playing a game, watching media, and you have the Orient, you know, the volume button swap, it will basically invert your volume rockers right here and you'll be able to use them differently. And then we do have App Ops, which is great. You can actually download this separately if uh, on some ROMs that's not included, but it's nice to have this integrated and it works really, really well. So if you go into something like a Bacon Reader, for instance, the Reddit app, and you don't want it to access location or NFC, you can hit ignore instead of allowed. And you can basically change this depending on what application you want to allow a certain functionality. So it's a really, really great application to limit or provide access to certain things. And you can do location, personal messaging. It's all categorized correctly and it's done really, really nicely. So App Ops is included. Uh, it's just like the one that's going to be in stock Android M coming up pretty soon. So it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, heads up notifications. If you don't like heads up notifications, you can disable this completely uh, just by tapping the toggle there. You can change your timeout intervals, two seconds to 10 seconds or you can just click never so it's always on until you decide what to do with the uh, notification. You can also choose do not disturb or blacklist apps completely. So you just tap on that and then you select whichever app you want to blacklist or have DND. It does have a built-in screen recorder, pretty basic stuff. You guys know what this does. You can of course integrate that with the power menu button or you can long press the power off here and it will come up as well. But that pretty much sums up Pure Nexus, guys, it, it's very stable. I've had almost no issues with this whatsoever. It's probably the best ROM that I've ran, to be quite honest. And uh, if you need any additional information on Pure Nexus, you can see it up here in the About Phone Pure Nexus Info tab. You can get push bullet update notifications, Google Plus community information as well. You have Beans Town's Twitter, and you can also donate to support the development. And I do recommend you guys support if you can as this is a really, really great ROM. And I want to especially thank Beans and the other developers and contributors behind this project for making this available to us. I hope it's here for a while and I definitely hope it continues on the next Nexus and uh, we see some more stuff come out of this. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to support me and see more videos like this in the future. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.